When I bring up the topic of heavy tanks, it should be no surprise if the first vehicles to pop into your head would be something like the Tiger Tanks or perhaps the IS series. With almost limitless videos and books about these more famous machines, there is much to learn about them. However, this oversaturation has the unintended side effect of making lesser known designs become even more obscure to the average person. Although I'm by no means saying no one talks about other vehicles, I think most would agree with me that this leaves a large gap in the knowledge of those who label themselves tank enthusiasts. This is even true for me, as I still learn about new vehicles constantly, even after years of learning about the subject. Today, we will be looking at one example of this, which originated from Hungary, known as the 44M Tosh. Thanks once again to Call of War for sponsoring this portion of today's video. If you haven't heard of them already from one of my previous videos, Call of War is a free-to-play online strategy game which allows you to take control of real-world nations from the Second World War. I've been getting back into strategy games lately, and I don't think anything beats the feeling of watching your battle plan succeed after careful preparation. Whether you decide to use a tank assault, aerial bombardment, or perhaps a secret weapon, it's up to you to either work with or destroy the up to 100 other players. Unlike many other strategy games, Call of War is not just real-time, but you can also use seamless cross-platform play to make sure you never get caught off guard. This is especially nice now that you may be back to a daily commute and need something to kill the time. So check out the link in the description to get a special bonus of 13,000 gold and a month of premium for being a viewer of my channel. This is only available for 30 days after this video is posted though, so don't wait to give the game a try. Now with that done, let's look at today's main topic. Our story begins in 1943, although you could argue it truly began the moment Hungary joined Operation Barbarossa. By 1943 though, the situation was becoming notably worse, especially in regards to the armor they were fielding. Unsurprisingly, this led to a request being sent to their German allies in an effort to secure a license to produce their own version of the much more advanced panzers of that period. Unfortunately for Hungary, this request would be denied, with one of the primary reasons stemming from Hungary's lack of suitable industry to even manufacture the tanks if they did receive the license to do so. With no alternative, they turned inwards and the Ministry of Defense began work on a domestic project to fill this need. This would first start with an upgrade program for the two Rand tanks already in service, but would ultimately result in a brand new design to replace them known as the 44M Tosh. All in all, this early development period for the new tank would last from around April to August 1943 with the first blueprints for the tank completed. Looking at the design, it should now be obvious why I titled this video as Hungary's Panther with the tank clearly being influenced by the German vehicle. This can be traced to several officers from Hungary who visited Kummersdorf in early 1943 and saw both the Tiger and Panther. These same officers would then put that experience to work on the Tosh. Outside of the general hull shape and design, as well as the turret sharing a loose resemblance to that of the Panther, the vehicles are still distinctly different. This should become obvious later, but the last thing I want you to take away from this video is that this was a copy of the Panther, which it was not. One of the most notable differences can be found in the suspension of the vehicle. Unlike the torsion bar suspension with interleave road wheels found on the Panther, the Tosh used a system with pairs of bogies and leaf springs. Although this was somewhat influenced by the Panzer 38T, the Hungarian design used smaller bogies as well as adding shock absorbers. Seemingly, this would result in a smoother ride for the vehicle, although it's hard to say if this would result in any issues for the tank later. Moving back to the hull, we can take a look at the armor protection it provided. Frontally, the tank would have 75mm on the upper plate, heavily sloped, with 100mm on the mid plate and 75 on the lower plate. The armor model I found does not seem to include the angled corners the final design features, but I think we can assume those would likely be 50mm as usually tanks with these type of corners feature thinner armor in those locations. However, I can't say for certain, so it could be more or less. The sides would be protected by 50mm at a slope above the tracks and 50mm vertical behind the tracks. 
The upper portion of the rear would feature 100mm of armor, with the lower area having 75 and finally the belly and deck armor being protected by 20mm. Keep in mind, these numbers are just what I could find and are largely based on one drawing showing the various armor thicknesses. Contrary to that, many sources list the maximum armor as 120mm, so there is certainly room for inaccuracies in these figures. Regardless of that, when we consider the angling and the fact that the hull was of welded construction, this still gave the Tosh a quite respectable level of protection. As for the turret, not as much is known aside from a rough armor thickness of 100mm. I did see one place list the rear armor as being 50mm, but I'm not entirely sure where that figure came from. Like I mentioned earlier, the design of the turret is quite similar to the Panther, albeit with a more octagonal shape. This would house the main armament of the tank, which originally was planned to be a Hungarian-modified, license-produced version of the 80mm Bofors AA gun from Sweden. This ended up not being ready in time for the prototypes though, so a 75mm L43 was used as a placeholder. Alongside this would be an 8mm coaxial machine gun. Another machine gun was considered for the whole front, but it does not appear in the mock-up photos. Whether this is due to the deletion of the machine gun or another reason is not clear. To power this vehicle, Hungary did not have many options. Some ideas were tossed around of creating a new engine for the tank, though this was not realistic for them. Instead, it was decided to use two of the V8s from the Turan to provide a combined 520 horsepower. This had some benefits as the engines were already tested and in production, however, for a tank that would weigh in the neighborhood of 37 tons, this would leave it somewhat underpowered. For comparison, the up-armored Sherman Jumbo had a very similar weight and horsepower at around 38 tons with 500 horsepower. Despite this similarity, the Tosh was estimated to be capable of a maximum speed of around 45 km per hour. I do question this a bit, considering the Jumbo only managed around 35 km per hour with similar power. This could be due to the dual engine layout or any number of other factors. Another possible reason for this could be that the tank was never actually tested, so the mobility figures are not realistic. Considering there is usually some power lost when using two engines together to power one gearbox, I tend to lean more towards the second option. Whatever the case may be, we sadly will probably never know. At this point, you may be wondering why this tank would be considered a heavy tank when everything about its design is much more like the mediums of other nations. This stems from the way Hungary designated its tanks. To them, any tank with a cannon larger than 75mm was considered a heavy tank, thus the 44M Tosh would have been a heavy tank to them. For an example of this, the Turan II, which used a short 75mm, was also referred to as the heavy Turan at times. Following the completion of its design, the Tosh was approved and two prototypes were ordered, one mild steel and the other fully armored. Reportedly, the mild steel prototype was nearing completion after being started in May of 1944 with the hull and drivetrain essentially complete and work beginning on the turret and gun. Unfortunately for the Hungarian Panther, in July an Allied bombing raid would put an end to the project when the factory was heavily damaged. This destroyed virtually everything, leading to the work being halted. Some attempts were made to restart the program, but this was never truly achieved. After so many years, little has survived from the program with only a few photos of a scale mock-up and a few drawings having been recovered. Overall, the design of the tank does seem to show promise with it using mostly proven components like the engine and suspension. However, given the pressure from the advancing Red Army, I doubt there was much hope for this tank even if the Allied bombs had missed their mark. This is not quite the end of the story for this tank though, as another supposed variation would surface decades later in the 1980s. You may see this tank destroyer brought up if you look into the 44M Tosh yourself, and it does seem plausible at first glance. As the story goes, the son of one of the chief engineers at Weissmanfried, the company originally tasked with building the prototypes, started to piece together the story of this vehicle. He learned that some of the parts for the tank were made in pairs, which would indicate a second vehicle. Although later documents found more recently revealed this to be a second prototype, he made the assumption that this was a Jagdpanther-type tank destroyer using the same hull. 
Some sources do claim that there were plans for this with an 88mm gun, but this is likely parroted from the earlier mistake, much like the confusion surrounding the Panther II, which was largely due to one fairly minor error. It wouldn't be too surprising for something like this to really have existed and been forgotten. With no evidence to support its existence outside of this mistake though, it's likely a fake tank. In the end, Hungary would never field a domestic heavy tank, though they did get some Tigers from Germany around the time this project was underway. This could have been another contributing factor to the program never being restarted, but that's just a guess on my part. Let me know what you think of this tank in the comments, and if this is the first time you've heard of this largely forgotten tank, I'd love to know. As always, thank you all for watching, and to my channel members who help support the channel even when the content may slow down a little, I really appreciate your support. One last reminder to check out Call of War using that link below to get the special bonus, and a thanks to them for supporting this channel. Hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I will see you in the next one.